Hey brothers and sisters, it is June 21st, 2016, and I've never really done this before, but I really felt led to do this today. Um, when I heard about my friend's death, you know, it was hard for me to work because I would be fine, I would like not cry, but then like I said, I've never lost anybody that close to me before. Like, I lost my grandfather and, um, like, my, my stepdaughter's mother, but I never really was close with her in that type of way. And my grandfather, I was too young. I was too little. I don't really remember much. So these are memories that are fresh that I actually remember, you know, and this man, he, he is, um, this guy, he was, uh, he was a very unique individual, to say the least, a full-on comedian, and, um, but definitely a unique person. <laughs> And so it was hard and difficult for me to work. And since I only had a couple hours left anyway, you know, I couldn't handle being in front of all these people and crying. You know, I just I didn't feel right to be working like that. So I wanted to to leave work and I wanted to um, just kind of be alone with God and to seek Him you know, with all my heart, and to have some some quiet time, and it's so beautiful. Take a look at this. It's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the lake, and so I'm on like this little hill, and I got my Jesus calling, and God's promises for you and my Bible and my little speaker. So I'm, you know, singing praise and worship songs, praising the Lord, you know, because there the enemy is attacking and he wants to put anxiety and fear upon us to, to fear and I have faith. I don't have fear. Fear is not from God. And so, um, I want to share with you a reading that I was led to about making choices. Making right choices. I have something against the lying voices that noise our world. You've heard them. They tell you to swap your integri integrity for a new sale. To barter your convictions for an easy deal. To exchange your devotion for a quick thrill. They whisper. They woo. They taunt. They tantalize. They flirt. They flatter. Go ahead. It's okay. Don't worry. No one will know. The world rams at your door. Jesus taps at your door. The voices scream for your allegiance. Jesus softly and tenderly requests it. The world promises flashy pleasure. Jesus promises a quiet dinner with God. Which voice do you hear? Wow. And these are some Bible scriptures. Sorry. Trust the Lord with all your heart and don't depend on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll make your path straight. And that's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. You were taught to leave your old self. Stop living the evil way you lived before. That old self becomes worse. 
because people are fooled by the evil things they want to do. But you were taught to be made new in your heart, to become a new person. That new person is made to be like God, made to be truly good and holy. And that's Ephesians 4, 24. Now that you are obedient children of God, do not live as you did in the past. You did not understand, so you did the evil things you wanted. But be holy in all you do, just as God, the one who called you, is holy. And that's 1 Peter 1, 14 and 15. So, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And it is the choices that we make. And the other day, and I, I actually, it's funny that this is um, what it was about. Because the other day, I was driving and I turned off my radio and I just was talking to the Lord. And it was about free will. I said, God, I am having a hard time with this. I said, you are more powerful over anything. You have all the power in the world. You are in control. I said, can't you just keep me on that right path and not falling off? Can't you just, you know, just take all my problems away and just keep me going forward, Lord? You know, because you, you can fix it. You can turn everything around. You know, the demons, evil spirits have to bow to you. That means situations have to bow to you because you are in control. I said, please, you know, but see, God is in control, but he allows free will. And, and I, I was saying, Lord, you know, why, why, why do you allow this free will? And he says, what you choose is what's in your heart you know he allows free will he allows us to make our own choices whether we're gonna lie or not lie whether we're gonna decide to steal something or not steal something and pay for it you know he allows us to make these choices of whether when hard times come that we're going to run and pick up a bottle or pick up a drug or are we going to hit our knees and be on our face in prayer and depend on Him, seek after Him to fill you with the peace that you want to walk in. So, and it's tough and He allows us to be tempted but he says that he will only, you know, can give us so much that we cannot handle. You know, I mean, like, ah, I think I said that wrong. He will only tempt us so far. He won't give us more than we can handle. And I'm like, wow, you must think that I am really strong. But he's trying, he wants to purify us. You know, he wants to strengthen us and to show us things and so he allows situations, he allows these trials to do just that. And what we choose is what is in our heart. You know, that's why it's, it is important to crucify our flesh daily. Because this skin wants to sin. We were born into sin. And if we don't crucify that flesh, we may just fall into sin. But God's grace, He can show us, He wants to show us, to show us His grace. Some people may not actually understand what His grace is until they fall back into sin. 
and then God shows himself to that person still and he still shows love and he is the same just like the Bible says Jesus God is the same today yesterday and tomorrow and forever forever he doesn't change we change so it is our choices that we make at that moment in time allows God to see what is in our heart you know we all make mistakes nobody is perfect and if somebody falls don't criticize them don't judge them pray for them and we need to be praying for each other because right now is a time of darkness and temptation all around us and the devil I can see that in my life he is trying to cause me to be weak because he knows that I am a force to be reckoned with that I am a warrior for God you know the way I ran after drugs on the street and in my old life is the way I run after Jesus because I depend on him I need him I need him for everything in my life and the enemy knows that and he knows that I know who I am fighting this battle I'm fighting him and the principalities and the dark forces that rule this world because if he can cause me to be weak I can't fight the way that I know to fight which is through prayer for my loved ones, for my stepdaughter, for my children, for my husband, for my brothers and sisters out there who are going through battles. You know, we need each other. And if we are weak, we're not really of great use. But God will, when we are weak, we are made strong, not by our strength, but by the Lord's strength. We are strengthened by God, by Yahweh. It is through Him that we are given the strength to stand and to walk in peace. Though chaos and trouble is all around us, that God is faithful and He is by our side and he is gracious to pull us through. He doesn't give up on us. When we feel that we are not worthy, that, you know, almost to the point of hopeless, God shows up in a mighty way. So just continue to seek after him. Continue to be devoted to him diligently seek him make time for him like I did today going away and uh, coming to this beautiful little pond lake river not a river but you know um, <laughs> and as just being with the Lord saying God I, I need you you know I found myself looking at the problem instead of looking at his presence. Because when you look at that problem, it can get very disturbing and discouraging. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to look at our problems, to look at those mountains in our life. But the Bible says that those who have faith, that they can speak to that mountain, and that mountain will be tossed out, moved, and thrown in the ocean. Amen. So I'm speaking to my God who can pick up that mountain and toss it into the ocean because it's in his hands. I am in his hands. You are in his hands. And our problems, our trials are nothing. They are nothing. They are like a speck of salt to God.
because God is so big. When we start looking at God and not at our problem, we will walk in peace and nothing can bring us down. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants us, he wants to bring us down. So just stand on the word of God, look to God, you know, it's easy to compare yourselves with other people. That's what the enemy wants you to do too, is to compare yourself, but don't do that because Jesus created you and he loves you and he made you perfect the way that you are. And he will not finish his work. He, he's still working in me and he's still working in you. So he is not done yet. And so I just hope that that was some kind of encouragement to somebody who needed to hear this. I know I needed to hear it. I'm speaking this to myself, you know, and we need to be careful with the choices that we make. Pray about everything. Don't go by impulse. Sometimes a situation can happen and instead of reacting, we need to pray about it. Instead of taking it, acting on impulse, you know. I know I am a person that um, likes quick gratification, <laughs> you know. And so, and if I'm feeling a certain way, I need to take it to the Lord. For He already knows. But when you bring your problem, when you cast your cares to Jesus, you are allowing Him favor to work this area of your life out, to take away this issue, to take away this problem, to restore it, to have His will be done. Because He doesn't want to see you hurt. God is of love. He doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want to see you depressed and sad and angry. He doesn't like to see relationships with people damaged. So, focus on God and not on your situation. And everything else will diminish. It will go away. It surely does turn everything around. And I am witnessing His grace. So, I love you all so much.